Hello everybody, this is GM Jesse Cry, and today I'd like to talk about the final round of the US Championship. And there, Nakamura won a very nice game against my friend Joshua Friedel, aka the Panda. And it was based a lot, I think, on opening preparation, and it involved um, a variation that I've talked about here at the site called the Fried Liver. And let's get those moves on the board before we talk about it further. So, first of all, in this position, um, Josh and many other people have been doing just fine against the traditional Rui Lopez. And they've also been doing fine against D4, the Scotch. And Kasparov has known to have been said that really he feels that these are the only two attempts by White to um, give White an advantage. And even though Kasparov himself has played this move, it's generally not given the greatest reputation. And in my video series on this, I've really tried to say that, in fact, this was one of the more dangerous ways for White to proceed, especially given the fact that the Scotch and the Rui Lopez aren't really doing all that well. And so Nakamura, first of all, by choosing this, I think chooses a dangerous line, but also um, he's uh, choosing something that uh, Josh, I know, uh, thinks that black should just be fine in. And the reason they think they're fine is that after knight f6, if you don't play knight g5, you just play d3, then black can just develop normally. But after knight g5, white's, of course, moving a developed piece twice. And we're going to get a situation where black's going to sacrifice a pawn, and um, it's going to get some dynamic play. Let's look first at how this happens. This is the idea. C6 takes, takes. And this is a position that's been seen many times. And it seems on the surface that white has um, maybe not enough play for, or his pieces are so poor that this pawn isn't simply worth it. Black has a nice central pawn. His bishops are ready to come out. Uh, beautiful central control. This knight is going to have some grief. Now, in my series on this, um, what I recommended was this move, bishop e2, and after h6, knight h3. This is a move that Steinitz had played, um, Fischer had played, and recently Short had played some nice games in this variation. And I think this is still totally playable, but Nakamura comes up with an excellent idea. It's been played really only in a couple of blitz games by Morozevich, and it's really interesting. After the game, uh, Nakamura said that he, you know he had seen this one blitz game by Morozevich and knew it had to be good, and then you know spent some time preparing this. And this was a key factor in this game was that he was able to prepare this little-known move here, Bishop D3, which I hadn't really seen before. And so by preparing this. Uh, before the game, knowing that it's a reasonable move, uh, a rather new move that I had never seen before, and many other players hadn't seen before. I think for sure Josh hadn't seen this before. It became um, a difficult situation over the board, not only for the reason that this is actually maybe a very good move, but also uh, just practically that White got his opponent in a position that he wasn't too familiar with. So, it's questionable what how black should arrange his pieces. Um, let me just say, maybe first of all, the reason this move looks so silly is it looks like an amateur move. By stopping your pawn from moving, it seems like black is just going to have enduring compensation. But the main feature of this move is that now if the knight gets kicked, he can return to e4. And this is substantially better and the variations where you have to go to knight f3 or to h3, because knight f3 you get pushed with e4. And that's a, an old line, and that was the line that I knew of when I was a kid. Um, so this variation sacrifices the development of this bishop, at least for the moment, for the sake of helping the knight on g5 come to a more natural square if it gets kicked. Okay, now let me just say, I, when I first saw this, I still felt that this was a very good uh, position for Josh, even if 
uh, the computer said that it was better for white simply because it seems like black is going to have an enduring initiative. But as it turned out, it was very hard uh, for, for black to find anything in this position. And if that's the case, and that's at least what Nakamura was claiming in the post-game interview, then this really um, is, is a big theoretical step in the, uh, in the so-called fried liver attack. By the way, the fried liver... Um, David Vigorito, fellow lecturer here, chastised me for calling this the fried liver because he thinks the fried liver is only when they take on knight takes d5 and we get some variations with knight f7. Though, of course, in my series, I recommended playing d4 first. And it, to his mind, that's only uh, properly the fried liver when, when that happens. Though I don't, I, I like calling the whole thing the fried liver, so it's kind of a matter of taste, I guess, and how you name things. I can't really get too excited about how I name things, so I do like calling things the fried liver. Okay, so let's look at how Josh played. It was very natural, and I think it gives us an indication of a, a good first attempt by Black to pl put his pieces naturally. Plays bishop e7, knight c3. Now we see the main point for White is that. He's going to just consolidate his position and his pawn by holding that e4 square down. Castles. Castles. And now rook b8. This was the part of the game which perhaps is controversial, this plan that Josh comes up with with rook b8 and rook b4. It's a very aggressive idea. But the main point of this move, I think, is to say that the way Josh, I think, reckoned this position was that this bishop doesn't know yet where it wants to go. And because that's the case, white, black wants to utilize this rook. So he's going to try to bring this rook into the game in an unconventional manner so that he doesn't have to commit this bishop, which is a very nice attacking piece. Now, the other problem black has is he would like to utilize this knight. And we'll see in this game that the key idea would be to play something like c5, threatening to harass c4, and then maybe knight c6 to d4. That, in a sense, is um, the development scheme that black is looking for here. Now, that being said, rook b8, rook b4 is going to look controversial in this game. However, it's a little bit unclear what... Um, Black should have done. So rook b8, and now a very nice simple move, h3. 